Hello, it's great to see you. Today I'm working on the third snowflake in this series of snowflakes that I'm making. My plan is to fill this entire cloth with them over the next few weeks. If you watch the last snowflake video that I made, I mentioned that I had an idea of formulating in my head and there might be an invitation for you. Well, I've been thinking more about my idea and I've come up with a plan. I've been thinking about how many variations there could be on these snowflakes and it seems like there are way too many for me to tackle all by myself. So I would like to invite you, if you would like, to make some of your own hand-sewn snowflakes and let's see how many different variations we can make. I would bet there are just as many variations as there are people in the world. So what, eight billion or so? If you factor in size, color, all of those things. But let's put some parameters around this project. Let's see, so far I've used six different stitches. Let's stick with that. So there are the whipped running stitch, the back stitch, the chain stitch, fly stitch, the straight stitch, and pistol stitch. I think those are the only stitches that I've used so far. So we'll work with variations on those stitches. And each of the snowflakes will be a six-pointed snowflake. So that basically means there will be six arms coming out from a center spot. And pretty much everything else will be up to you. You can make these big, you can make them small, you can use whatever colors you like. I'm using these really light colors that make them look like snowflakes, but if you'd rather use really bright colors, you can do that. You can use whatever fabric you want as the background. I'm using linen here because it happened to be something that I have. Oh, the other thing that I would suggest is that you use things that you already have at home with rather than going out and buying new supplies and if you have no sewing supplies well maybe you'd like to think of some creative ways that you might acquire some that don't involve buying buying things perhaps you can ask your friends if they have sewing supplies that they might be willing to share with you i would bet anybody who does any sewing has stuff that they'd be happy to share or maybe there are groups in your community that share supplies and resources, a community center or something like that, that you could go to and work on a sewing project using some stuff that they have. I think all of those things are really great ideas. Of course, if you absolutely have no way to acquire supplies, without purchasing them, then I would suggest that you buy secondhand before you go out to the store and buy some brand new things. You don't need anything fancy for this. You just need some thread, a needle that has that eye big enough for the thread to fit through, and some background cloth that would let your thread show up. That's it, nothing fancy at all. And maybe a pair of glasses so that you can see what you're doing. Uh, those That would be non-negotiable for me. And let's see what you can come up with. And one other thing, I would encourage you, if it feels like this is something that that you'd like to try, I would encourage you to not use a template or draw out guidelines for your flakes. I would encourage you to do it freehand and just see what happens. Now, I will tell you that not, not everything is going to work out as you hoped. And this particular video is a good example of that. And I'll tell you a little bit more about how this snowflake didn't go as I'd planned in a little bit. Now, if you have your own YouTube channel, maybe you would like to share your creations on your channel, or perhaps Instagram is more your thing. It would be great if you shared your, your creations there. I've even come up with a hashtag. I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. My hashtag is Mystico Flakes. Get it? My YouTube channel name is Mystico Makes, so Mystico Flakes makes sense, right? Also, snowflakes, co-flakes, right? Right? All makes sense, doesn't it? You know this is a good idea when it, when it all starts to come together like that. 
If you're a Facebook person and you belong to stitchy groups on Facebook, maybe you'd like to share your creations there. I might not see them, but other people will see them and that's a good thing. And I've even created a website with the parameters for the project. And what if you don't have any social media at all? You can still make your snowflakes and share them with people in real life, in your world. Maybe you can make a gift or a card for somebody in your life. They don't really take that long to make. First two took about 20 minutes, but these smaller ones, I'm averaging about 10 minutes each. So yeah, I think that that's a card, <laughs> a card worthy amount of time. I'd also like to extend another offer to you, whether or not you share them through your own channels. If you'd like to send me a picture of what you've made, and if you go to my website, there's a way that you get in touch with me. We'll find a way for you to send me a picture of what you make. So if enough of you make snowflakes, or perhaps I should call them co-flakes, I can make a compilation video to post here on my channel so everybody can see them. This particular snowflake flake and this particular video did not go quite as I had planned. Somewhere along the way, my, my camera stopped recording and I kept stitching. And perhaps I should have stopped when my camera stopped recording because I kind of like the way that that the snowflake was looking, but I didn't. I kept going and I'm not really crazy about the way that the snowflake looks now, but that's okay because I know that I can always add to it. I'm not feeling like I want to do that right now, but I know that in the future I will be adding to the snowflake until I like the way it looks because I know that Everything is beautiful in the end, and if it isn't beautiful, it isn't the end. And that's how I feel about this particular snowflake. I don't think it's particularly beautiful yet, and that's okay. Things don't have to be beautiful all the way through the whole process, as long as they're beautiful in the end. Anyway, I hope you will join me and make a perfectly imperfect snowflake or two for yourself, and I'd love to see what you come up with. Happy stitching and bye for now.